In the second part of this demonstration, we looked at the assignment of colors along the uh, hair strands based on the same gradient controlling the density fall off. In this third part, we are going to look at the uh, acquisition of color from the root of uh, the hair. We are going to query a texture map from the teapot and uh, modulate the color of each hair strand individually. In order to do this, we'll first need a, a standard material assigned to the teapot with some diffuse map. Let's uh, pick a cellular map for now, switch it to explicit map channel so it uses uh, mapping coordinates from channel 1. We'll display it in the viewport and set its size to about 0 0.25 and uh, switch it to chips. This gives us some white spots and a black background that means that the hairs are going to query the color at the root of uh, uh, the spline and uh, use that color to modulate the existing color already calculated through the blending. In order to get to that color, we're going to use the object nearest point operator, which has multiple outputs. And it requires two inputs. The one is the lookup point. We are going to uh, use a channel provided by the hair called hair root. This gives us the position of uh, the root. For each particle along the spline, this value is the same and uh, corresponds to the root of the uh, spline that they were generated on. In the case of uh, 3ds Max Hanfa, this channel is already in world space because we're getting all the hairs in world space from all the modifiers available in the scene. When using actual splines or hair farm, this uh, value would be in object space, so we would have to convert it to world. But in this case, we don't need any conversion. And we also need a geometry input. If we drag from the geometry input socket, a new geometry input operator will be created because uh, there is no other node that makes sense in this case. So there is no menu that appears. It's just uh, the node is being created immediately. In this case, we'll have to pick the teapot as the source. Now we have the nearest point but what we also need is the texture coordinate and the texture coordinate is not available as an actual output in the nearest point operator. What's available is the position, whether the uh, point is valid or not, the face index, the distance, the normal and the barycentric coordinates. We can use another object uh, operator called the GeoQuery and this one also requires a geometry input and then a face index and barycentric coordinates on that object and we have those channels already so what we can do is select the geometry input select the nearest point and select the geo query and hit the space bar this will match the names of the inputs and the outputs and the geometry input goes directly to the geometry socket the face index goes to the face index and the barry coordinates go to the barry coordinates input at this point we have the texture coordinate at the root of each here what we need now is the actual texture and we want to evaluate this texture at exactly this texture coordinate in previous versions of magmoth law uh, one had to actually write that uh, um, information to a different channel and then use the implicit channels passed up the stack to evaluate the uh, particle texture at uh, the corresponding position. But in Magma 2 we can just create a new input texture and enable an optional input socket called the texture cards and in this case, we just have to output the texture code channel into the texture code input socket and pick the same texture map already used in the scene as an instance. The output of the input texture is uh, by default color. So what we could do is multiply the 
blend result which uh, was uh, generated in the previous uh, part of this demonstration with the color acquired from the teapot and this will modulate the color so we'll get darker uh, hairs where the texture is black and we'll get the original colors where the texture is white. At this point we can hit render the uh, retrieving of particles will be slightly slower because we are evaluating a nearest point on the surface of the teapot for each particle along each hair and now you'll see that some of the hairs are dark and uh, wherever they were sitting on a white spot they get the original orange color. Obviously we could also uh, replace the color output with the texture that we are acquiring and um, the other operators are automatically disabled and uh, won't prevent the modifier from updating so at this point we'll just get black and white of course we can go and create some fancier colors in order to produce a more interesting uh, looking here so if we render now we're getting the actual texture assigned to the teapot directly uh, on the hairs without modulating a previously existing color. And another thing that we can do is we can replace this uh, procedural map with an actual bitmap, for example this one, and this will project the colors from the texture map onto the hairs. So each hair will have the same color based on the texel at its root. What we can also do is instead of multiplying the original orange color by the color taken from the bitmap we can add the one to the other in order to boost the existing colors. So we just switch the multiply to add and since uh, this um, uh, texture map has relatively bright colors, we could potentially multiply uh, the output with a scalar in order to reduce the influence. Let's use something like 0 0.6 and try to render now the original orange red here with some additions from the texture uh, coming from uh, the teapot.